In this video, we're talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra. So what the fundamental theorem of algebra says is if you're given some nth degree polynomial in this form, uh, that it will have exactly n roots, n roots. So any nth degree polynomial has n roots. So basically what that means is whatever the degree of your polynomial function is, you can uh, expect to have exactly that many roots for your polynomial function. And we've seen this before. Right? So for example, we've looked at graphs of parabolas, and we've seen that the parabola will do something like this, where it opens up and it crosses the x-axis here in two places. So it crosses there, and it crosses there. So this is a second degree polynomial, and it has two roots, two roots. Um, and we've also seen it with cubics. Maybe you have a cubic that does something like this. Looks like this. Uh, again, it has three roots. It has the same number of roots as its degree. So this is a third degree polynomial with three roots. So these seem to hold true for the fundamental theorem of algebra. However, we've also seen cases where the fundamental theorem of algebra doesn't seem to hold true. Uh, for example, not all parabolas are going to cross the x-axis. Sometimes we have parabolas that do something like this, where they open up and they're entirely above the x-axis. And this is a second degree polynomial, which means it should have two roots, but it appears to not have any. So is this a contradiction uh, to the fundamental theorem of algebra? And the answer is actually no, because when we're talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra and it having n roots, these n roots are not restricted to be real roots. For example, all of these where it crosses the x-axis like this, those are all real zeros. The n roots do not have to be real zeros. The roots could be real, or imaginary roots. They could be real or imaginary. And that's something interesting about the fundamental theorem of algebra. So that means that although this is a second degree polynomial that has no real roots, it does have two imaginary roots. It does have two imaginary roots. Now when we're talking about imaginary roots, uh, they always come in something called com uh, conjugate pairs. So complex numbers always come in conjugate pairs. So what are com uh, conjugate pairs? So if we're looking at, let's say we have an imaginary number um, or a complex number with an imaginary part that is something like 3 minus 6i. So this is a complex number. Uh, we have a real component and we have an imaginary component. So any, uh, any complex number with an imaginary component comes in a conjugate pair. So what that means is 3 minus, or sorry, plus 6i would be its complex conjugate. Uh, so complex conjugates come in the form a plus bi and a minus bi, where the values of a and b are the same, and then the signs in between them just change. So these are complex conjugate pairs. Uh, so let's take a look at a few more examples of complex conjugate pairs. So let's say we had just the imaginary number um, negative 2i. So you could imagine this as being 0 minus 2i, where the real component is 0. But usually we don't write it that way, so we just have negative 2i. So its conjugate would be positive 2i. Right, so this is, uh, these two are conjugate pairs. Um, let's look at another example. Let's say we have negative five plus three i. So negative five plus three i, if that was one of our imaginary or complex roots, then we would also know that negative five minus three i would be um, a root because they come in conjugate pairs. So when you're looking at conjugate pairs, we see that the first value doesn't change at all. So the value of A remains the same, and then the value of B, they're just opposites. So one's positive, one's negative. So those are called conjugate pairs. So anytime you're dealing with 
um, a polynomial like this second degree polynomial that has no real roots, we know that it will have two imaginary roots. And they, uh, these complex con uh, these imaginary roots always come as complex conjugate pairs.